Malaysia expects to reopen its economy and lift movement controls for most states as early as October as it ramps up its COVID-19 vaccinations for its population. But the timing of the reopening of international borders remains uncertain. And so Malaysians who are stranded here in Singapore due to pandemic-driven border closures have started planning for the long term. Malaysians Nurul Wahida and her husband Saiful Nayan have been living apart from their four children and family for nearly 17 months now, since the borders between Singapore and Malaysia were shut in March last year. Being away from her loved ones has taken a huge emotional toll on the 26-year-old. She fell into depression and suffered a miscarriage in February this year, following the death of her grandfather back home. Actually, Atuk dah panggil balik uh, tahun lepas lagi tapi dah cakap sabarlah nanti border nak buka dah ni, border nak buka. Kira macam kita bagi harapan tau. And then kita bagi harapan tu macam orang tu tu oh, okey lah, okey lah. Then sekali dah tenat apa semua, macam family lah bagi tahu family call, uh, cakap Atuk dah nazak betul ni. Uh. So bila video call tu memang nangis lah. Under a compassionate travel scheme between Malaysia and Singapore, Wahida was able to return home to see her grandfather for one last time. The trip costs about 2,500 Singapore dollars, including the quarantine costs, and she has had to miss work for almost a month. It was only made possible with the support from her employer and fellow Malaysians who chipped in to pay for the costs. Since then, Wahida has been coping better. She has sought medical help and has adjusted her lifestyle to face the reality that she may not be able to return home in the near future. She and her husband, who were initially living separately in temporary accommodations, now stay together in a rented house. This gave them more privacy and also allowed them to save costs by cooking their own meals. Macam Ida dengan suami dia apa ni lain-lain lain-lain company. So kita orang macam berjauhan sangat tau. Macam dia jurung Ida pula dekat apa Park Royal Beach Road sana. Memang jauh. Okay. So lagi satu sebab sebab apa ni a uh, Ida fikir lagi jimat kot sebab kita boleh masak kan kalau duduk hotel tak boleh masak asyik setiap hari balik kerja a uh, semua nak kena beli. Biasalah duit kat sini lain sikit kan. Uh. As border closures drag on a small community of Malaysians working in Singapore have banded together to give each other emotional support. Farah Diana, a 33-year-old business development executive, began posting about Malaysians in Singapore who need help on her social media platforms. The response, she says, has been encouraging. Some of them, they will come, like they said, Kak, I don't want to get anything from you. I just want to help others Malaysians who need the help. We have uh, many volunteers around me, that, uh, including my friends. They, what? They, we do like uh, activities to help them to deep, what to release the tension, everything. Then we do the activity like bowling, um, pulau ubin, and many things. Besides organizing activities and raising donations, the group has also organized multiple food drives and facilitate cross-border travel for death-related or critically ill emergency visits. Before Malaysia and Singapore shut their borders to each other on March 18 last year, hundreds of thousands of Malaysians used to commute to Singapore every day for work. The closure order came at short notice. In haste, many decided to enter and stay in Singapore, bringing with them only bare essentials, thinking the shutdown would only be temporary. But days have become weeks and weeks become months, and the borders remain closed.
COVID-19 cases on both sides of the causeway are increasing. The daily average numbers in Malaysia surpassing 10,000 since July. In Singapore, too, it's facing a new wave of COVID-19 outbreak, with cases hovering around the 100 mark. And so until these numbers are brought down, observers say any discussions on just when the borders can be reopened will have to be placed on hold. The unending wait is eating away optimism among Malaysians in Singapore. Many who had anticipated that borders could be reopened at the end of the year are no longer hopeful. Ida Afrina had just begun working in Singapore for a month before borders shut. She has not returned home since. Though it has been lonely, the 24-year-old has prepared herself mentally to be separated from her family for years to come. Yang tu kita tak boleh jangka lah sebab kes kan makin tinggi. Lima tahun akan datang kot. Atau mungkin tiga tahun akan datang ke. Uh, so dalam jangka masa tu kita memang akan stay dekat si sini lah. Kita tak akan balik dulu lah. Saya lebih belajar untuk hidup berdikari. Lepas tu saya belajar untuk jimatkan dalam kos lah duit. Lepas tu kita macam video call dengan family hari-hari. Uh, nanti je lah dapat buat, buat masa sekarang. But the prolonged separation has become increasingly unbearable for many. Some Malaysians in Singapore are calling on their government to remove quarantine when they return home. An online petition launched in July surpassed its 10,000 signatures in a matter of days. It suggests that the 14-day quarantine could be replaced with a one-day quarantine until they get their PCR test results instead. Malaysian Vijendra Supaya is optimistic that Malaysia and Singapore will be able to recognize each other's COVID-19 vaccine certificates soon as both countries ramp up their vaccination drives. This, he says, would slowly pave the way for borders to reopen. The 40-year-old has been working in Singapore for more than a decade. He now stays with his relatives here, which he says has allowed him to keep his cost of living low. Those already have uh, two vaccinated with uh, maybe the encourage with the new uh, method with that vaccinated passport or they have uh, personal uh, swap kits whatever it is currently we have this kind of a swap kits right personal that we can swap ourselves and uh, we have this kind of a vaccination passport and encouraging to have uh, one week once or months once that you can go back to Malaysia and come back to Singapore without quarantine. Yeah, quarantine. It doesn't matter that we have a daily swap test. Should be no problem for us. As Malaysians stranded in Singapore make long-term plans amid reopening uncertainties, businesses in Malaysia's southernmost state of Johor are taking this period to retool their business models as they strive to keep afloat while waiting for the movement restrictions to be lifted. Nestled against kilometres of pristine beachfront, Desaru Coast is everything a holiday goer could ask for. When the project first opened in 2016, the integrated resort had positioned itself to become the go-to holiday destination, especially for tourists from neighbouring Singapore due to its close proximity. Before the pandemic struck, the shores of Desaru Coast were a hive of activity with water sports events and festivals and a healthy tourist footfall both domestic and from across the causeway. But since the border closures and numerous rounds of movement control orders, the beaches are empty and tourists are far and few. Occupancy rates here have been close to zero, except for a few business and long-term visitors. So far, the resort has managed to keep all of its 1,200 staff by redirecting them to maintenance work like refurbishing and renovating the resort's assets. Everyone is facing a challenging time, but I think in this such challenging times, we should try and we spend every day, waking hour, to look at all the different opportunities for us to be creative, 
nimble to react to whatever the circumstance. We became more creative with regards to our so-called postponement policies more than the cancellation policies. So these are the things that we constantly looked at and uh, we're already preparing ourselves for the market to reopen. The integrated resort is only in its first phase of expansion with some 50% of its 4,000 acres yet to be developed. A new ferry terminal is already about 95% completed. This will be Johor's latest international entry point when it's ready by the third quarter of this year. But until Malaysia's latest lockdown measures which started in June, business had been sustained by domestic tourists who turned to local destinations amid border closures. According to the Malaysian Association of Hotels, the hotel industry in Malaysia was estimated to have lost more than 6 billion ringgit, or some 1.45 billion US dollars, in 2020. In Johor alone, more than a dozen hotels have either suspended their operations or have shut down. So with this uh, current situation, there's no definite time period uh, before we can see more hotels holding up. The survival of our hotels depends on how healthy their cash reserves are and how creative they are. So as this prolonged, especially this lockdown where there's no domestic travellers are allowed, uh, definitely the situation is very critical as this reserve are running low. Subsidies from the government have helped to ease some burden, but eventually we still need tourists, we need domestic travellers to stay our hotels and that is the only solution now. According to him, the outlook is grimmer for smaller hotels in this state, which traditionally heavily depend on visitors from neighbouring Singapore. And many are turning to other business models to stay afloat. While bigger hospitality developments, backed by international chains, which come with deeper pockets, are better positioned to tide over these tough times. But even the big boys need to get creative. The Renaissance Johor Bahru Hotel suffered a massive drop in about 90% of its business since the pandemic started. It's tapped on its location in the city centre to pivot its business model in the meantime by offering exclusive meals for home delivery from its established in-house restaurants. Now, as a hotel, uh, that was never a very large focus for us. Uh, but in the near term, that's 100% of our business. Um, so we are always doing stuff which, um, which makes us offer a customer something which is probably not available in the market. As the hotel explores new ways to bring in revenue, staff are eagerly anticipating one thing, for movement restrictions both internationally and locally to be lifted. We understand from a government point of view that they are taking baby steps towards these to make sure that the larger population is secure. And again, I would come back to it, as a business, we would want to, everything to open tomorrow. But as a corporate citizen, we know this is a very, it's a very difficult situation for all. Um, uh, you know, some people have lost their loved ones. Um, so putting business aside, we want to make sure that every step that the government takes and we take as a business is all towards making sure that um, when, as and when things open, it's secure for everybody. Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin recently said that most Malaysian states are likely to move into phase four or the final phase of the country's COVID-19 exit strategy by October at the earliest as the country races to vaccinate its population. He added that next year's budget, which will be tabled in October, will focus on driving economic recovery and rebuilding national resilience. Saya juga ingin memaklumkan budget 2022 akan menumpukan pada tiga fokus utama, yaitu agenda memacu pemulihan ekonomi, membina semula daya ketahanan negara, dan memangkin pembaharuan atau dengan izin recovery. Resilience and reform. Subuangan itu tumpuan khusus akan diberikan kepada usaha untuk memulihkan sektor terjejas seperti pelancongan, meningkatkan keupayaan sistem kesihatan awam serta skop perlindungan sosial 
dan merancangkan ekonomi digital dalam usaha mengukuhkan daya saing negara dalam menghadapi norma baru global. As the local economy continues to suffer under the weight of the lockdown measures and border closures, more residents are struggling to make ends meet. Government data showed Johor's poverty rate rose from 3.9% in 2019 to almost 8% in 2020, while hardcore poverty rose to 2.5% in 2020 from 0.2% in 2019. The dire situation has prompted different organizations across society to come together to help vulnerable communities to tide through the current crisis. Before the pandemic, Johor Bahru, the southernmost city in Malaysia, was seen as a city of opportunity, attracting migrants from all over the country. But COVID-19 has dealt them an unexpected blow. With job and business opportunities disappearing overnight as the virus spreads and home far away, many have been left stranded. Tiong Chung Wei spends his time helping to distribute food to the needy. He once ran a thriving business. The Sarawak native had travelled south to set up his business in Johor Bahru to sell electronic goods to customers mostly based in neighbouring Singapore, who have stopped coming since the COVID-19 pandemic. As sales and his savings dried up, the 25-year-old had to close down his shop. He didn't think he had any choice but to survive on the streets. Because I'm telling myself, I'm an only boy at the home. I have to do something. I have to mm, make my family proud that I can go home. But not yet, not the time, not today. I don't worry about food. I don't worry about stay. What I worry about is salary. What, what I worry about is job. After losing his job in Kuala Lumpur, 42-year-old Adam Chi headed to Johor to earn a living. But work opportunities here too are limited due to the impact of the pandemic. Adam has been homeless for three months, relying on hot meals distributed by NGOs and members of the public. Sampai ke JB sini, saya pun ada angkat atau mura yang bajet di hotel. Satu dua hari dia boleh tahan sampai macam tu saja. Saya pun dengar orang cakap, kawan-kawan cakap ada bagi makan dekat sini tepi-tepi. Saya pun turunkan bandar sini, mari okeylah. Alhamdulillah boleh makan kenyang lagi, boleh tahan lagi. Sikit-sikit hari nak cari kerja pun susah. Memang susah. The plight of the new homeless like Adam and Cheng Wei hasn't gone unnoticed. NGOs say they have seen more people forced to live out on the streets since the pandemic started. So when the lockdown was imposed in March last year, the number increased naturally. Because people couldn't work and people lost their jobs, and especially those who had been homeless before that, now without jobs will be a very critical condition. Some 229 homeless people in Johor Bahru have registered with the state government. Of these, government agency Perkeso, which oversees social welfare initiatives, has identified that 72% of the homeless are still employable. Johor State Government recently launched a program to help find employment for the homeless. Those interested will be screened, equipped with the necessary interview skills and matched with a suitable job. They are also given temporary accommodation while waiting to start work. Kita ingin memastikan golongan gelandangan juga diberi peluang untuk mendapat peluang pekerjaan yang baik. Seterusnya, dapat keluar dari kepompong hidup mereka sebagai gelandangan yang mana di akhirnya mereka mampu menyewa sama menyewa sama ada bilik ataupun rumah berpendapatan bulanan dan boleh membeli keperluan asas harian mereka sendiri. Since the program was launched in early July, some 26 homeless people have secured a job. They include Chung Wei and Adam. But while the state agencies have been driving efforts to help the homeless find employment, they acknowledge that there are some who reject their help. 
Some of the homeless have to deal with sickness, while others are simply not interested. More social assistance will still be given to them through the Malaysia Red Crescent Society, or MRCS, whose royal patron is the Queen of Johor, Raja Zari Sophia. The NGO is in charge of ensuring the welfare of homeless people in Johor Bahru. People experiencing homelessness are more vulnerable to contracting the coronavirus due to the lack of proper shelter and sanitation. Many of them are also elderly, some with pre-existing health conditions. It's also difficult for them to adhere to public health directives like social distancing and isolation. And so, while most Malaysians have the privilege of staying at home during a movement control order, the homeless are left with little to no choice but to remain out here and hope for the best. On this note, MRCS will continue to spearhead efforts to distribute hundreds of hot meals daily, not only for the homeless, but also for anyone else in need. With the number of COVID-19 cases at a record high in Malaysia, stricter SOPs have been put in place at distribution centres. The homeless can also look forward to a temporary shelter that is currently being planned by the Johor Bahru District Council. Basically, we want to save them from the risk uh, of the getting the virus. They should be moved out to a place where they should be having a safe place to, to stay. We aim to relieve them of the situation and to save them, actually, from being uh, homeless people all the while. So through this and through efforts of all agencies and other NPOs, by providing basic amenities, provided with food, we also provide services to ensure that they can also find work by themselves. The rising number of homeless people is part of the economic challenges brought about by the pandemic. While the situation is not unique to Johor, the state has introduced measures to tackle the issue. This includes three rounds of stimulus, with the latest package launched in June, worth some 241 million ringgit or $56 million. The local government said it would strengthen pandemic management and extend financial assistance to more people with the additional budget.